Okay, so um, hello everyone. I am Zsófi Vasi and I'm the project manager of Bakalit Multi Art Center in Budapest, which is a creative cultural and residency center in the industrial part of the city. And we are one of the co-producers of the production called Assimilate. And today I have here with me Sonia Stajanovic, who is uh, the founder of this project. So I would like you to introduce yourself first, Sonia, for Thank us. You. Thank you, Jaffi, for the introduction. Uh, I'm Sonia Stanovic and I'm from Novi Sad, Serbia. I'm the dancer and also choreographer of this piece. Uh, also a uh, management part and everything else that is needed. Uh, my colleagues are, my co-workers are not here. Luba, which we together we de developed the idea. Luba and Matt, we're working all together on, on developing the concept of the project. So I am the contemporary dancer and the choreographer. I'm still studying on the University of Dance in Belgrade, and I'm also working in the, as a dance teacher in some uh, studios here in Serbia. So, and also working on some uh, international productions and collaborations. Like for the Simulate project, idea started from the open call for perspective project. We got uh, the names of the countries that we should go to residencies with, and we started thinking about how should we connect these four uh, four spots in Europe. What would be the connecting point? And of course, uh, there were the people. It's not the places that connects us; it's the people that are constantly connecting us. So we were we started of on the topic on of migration and assimilation, and especially because Serbia and Hungary they have a really long history of being together and close and apart in the same time. So we kind of started to search all the connection also in uh, Czech Republic because we are from the same language group, but we still find difficulties to communicate with each other. And we um, kind of tried to integrate uh, also France that is geographically and culturally so far away, but also connected with the people who travel and live there from Serbia and from all these other countries. So we uh, decided to work in a, as the Bespectative project deals with the um, inclusion of the audience and development of the audience in the same time. So we, uh, uh, we use the format of uh, theatrical adventure gaming, which is uh, uh, immersive theater in a way. But we uh, decided to call it the gaming because we are trying to attract also the younger audience, which is not uh, adults, which is or youngsters and teenagers by um, using by using this game like a format. So we are using different technologies like a VR, virtual reality, and also augmented reality and a reality. So we are trying to uh, present our piece in this overlapping constantly these three realities and also integrating the music and the dance in the same time. That sounds lovely and um, so if I understood it right the idea of the project came because of the open call you read or you already had this topic in your mind to work with? Yes, I was uh, always attracted to this uh, connections and multicultural multiculturality in general, and how this uh, how this functions in the society. Is it a is it a limitation or is it a, a starting of some new a new combination, new twist, new uh, creating a new culture or how this interacts with each other. Th this was always something that 
fascinated me and that I was interesting in res researching a bit. And yeah, this kind of, um, when we saw the open call in these four countries, we were constantly thinking of how we can connect these places together. And this was one of the ways to think about it. And do you have your own experience with the migration or in your family around you? Or is just yes. something that interests you? Yeah, this is, yeah, I'm also connected in a way to this, but also this is something that interests me because of the, I'm traveling as an artist, I'm constantly traveling a lot. And I was also in some situations of being uh, from completely different culture and also the language uh, yeah and somehow i it always fascinated me how this how we can overcome some borders and are borders necessary i was always trying to kind of ask myself the questions and also the people and how to and to search for different opinions that makes us beautiful and not the one and the same idea of something. And what do you think performance, performance art can add to this topic? Because it's, it's a very common topic to discuss in general. Mm -hmm. But what is the plus that performance art and music and dance can add to the people as a plus? A plus would definitely be that the dance and the music is, a uni I could call it a universal language, a non-verbal language. And we can, on, a, on some level, all connect uh, uh, through our emotions and our experiences because we don't need to necessarily understand every single word that someone said to understand the essence of the meaning of the piece. We can all connect from our experience and from our angles and points of views to it. And uh, what phase are you currently in? Currently, because of the COVID, we're still in a phase. We have the we were developing the concept, but now we are trying to find a way to uh, implement the activities of the project combining uh, online and and being in person. And the thing that I can say is that this being together physically is really missing out because we I'm still of this opinion that online and the internet can't replace the live and performance is not the same it doesn't carry the same energy as the live performance and also with working with the people on the piece it's the same thing i totally agree with you and the, the whole concept is based on traveling and meeting with yeah, different exactly. cultures but uh, as we are one of the residency places and the residency should have taken place in November, but obviously <laughs> due to the COVID, we had to postpone it. Uh, we still decided together to conduct with the interviews online. Mm -hmm. Can you talk a little bit about your impressions mm -hmm. and how did the interview happen? Yeah, I was uh, at first when we tried to find a way, I was a bit skeptical because it, you see these people from the for the first time in your life and it's different than online than when you are in person and you find some energy and connection i was a bit skeptical how skeptical how this will go but it, we really had a beautiful and really emotional moment even even on zoom so we kind of overcame this border of being online again so it was really beautiful we had a people with different backgrounds with from all around the world. Uh, we had a one flamenco dancer from Spain that came to Nîmes. We also had a, a lot of beautiful people that are living in Hungary, but that came from all parts of the world, starting from USA, that the person came to Thailand and then to Hungary. Uh, people from Kazakhstan, uh, from Slovakia, 
from Poland. It was really beautiful to to connect with these people and to uh, discuss about the same topic, but also to go deeper to their personal stories. We really had a amazing time, like having talks with them. Yeah, it was really beautiful. And will you be able to use these interviews in the performance or it's more about the part of the research still? It's both. We're trying to, uh, as our performance is based on collecting the stories and somehow uh, subliming it in four characters that our audience will be um, will be there to experience their stories through these four characters. We're somehow trying to find a way to summarize and invent some of the characters. Of course, we have some people in the performance that were alive, that are real persons, but we're also trying to, uh, from these interviews and from all these experiences to integrate it in the performance, in this uh, gaming thing that the people will really go through the different rooms, different setups, so we're trying to uh, find a model how we can share all these stories except these four characters. So we're trying to transfer their experiences of, of this topic of assimilation and integration. And what's your plan for the future? Because if I know it correctly, the premiere is supposed to be in September already and the residencies are in hold or on hold. So how will you, you know, overcome mm -hmm. challenging times? Yeah, we're somehow trying to, in these times, it's really uh, what is important is to find what is really essential and what you can adapt. And yeah, I think that the essential thing for our project is really that we would need to go at least for one day to these residences just to shoot because we can't create France and Budapest and Prague in Serbia, unfortunately. Uh, so we, we would need to shoot there just for 360 so we can transfer this to the virtual reality uh, part of the project but we will try to find the models of working on a choreographic piece that we at least have, like in Hungary, we can all meet together because we have people, uh, dancers from Serbia and from Hungary. So we can gather on one place, uh, talk about it, research it and uh, have different methods of working, like have some tasks that we are developing ourselves as a performance, as a dancers and to have some time to kind of uh, put the puzzle together in one place. Originally, we were planning to make a workshop uh, yes. with people as part of the residency, uh, how it will change, you know, the artistic process that it might not be possible to, to go with it. Yeah, the workshop was there to enrich the experience of the the original original idea was to call the people who were on the interviews to the workshop and also the people from the uh, society from the local communities to uh, kind of put some setup of uh, mixed people and how they will interact through the dance and through the music together as some kind of a as I said before, uh, nonverbal languages, some universal language that we can all understand and connect with. And that was the, that would be the kind of uh, starting point, how to develop the dance material from, from, from these people, how they will re react to certain situations that we would set up. But since that is not the case where we're trying to um, trying to find the balance of the material that is online and the material that we can create by ourselves live. So the workshop would be a whole different layer for the project, but since it's not 
probably it's not going to happen. We will uh, try to, through these talks that we had with the people, we will try to have um, through these experiences, through these emotions that came from these interviews, we will uh, try to integrate that in the project. Yeah, that sounds great. Um, and uh, can you talk a little bit more about the participatory part of the final performance, how you will include the audience in the show? Yeah, audience is included throughout the whole piece from the beginning till the end. Uh, uh, we uh, wanted to create, so the, uh, as you know, like the escape room is is this theatrical adventure gaming in a different, in an artistic way. So we will um, separate the audience in four groups who will need to work together to uh, solve some of the tasks that we will put in different room. They will follow their leader, which would be our character. So every group of the audience will have their character and they will follow it through the tablet through the some kind of installations through the VR glasses that we will prepare they will have different tasks and through these tasks they will tasks they will uh, collect the identity of this person and the experiences of this person because all the all the characters they have this the common uh, common trait that they had the migration experience so they will from their angles and from their cultural background they will talk about it so we will um, the audience will need to work together to solve the tasks in order to also learn something else like for example they would need to learn a word in hungarian in serbian in czech in English, in all these languages that we are working with and that we are connecting with, they will need to learn it and to kind of transfer it to the music and to the body in a way that they would need to follow the rhythm of the word and to try to, to also make some steps with it and because it all come with some rhythm and with the music and dance. And we're trying to connect this way to the people. And when they kind of finish this journey of going by themselves and working together to achieve something, they will enter the final performance, which would be the dance part of the piece. And the dance piece is, um, the concept of it is that the audience is constantly standing and moving through the whole space. So the audience is never, a passive spectator, that was the idea, to kind of keep them all the time alert and active to, uh, to interact with the, also with the dancers. Also the dance piece will be interactive as well. Wow, sounds exciting. And finally, can you talk a little bit about what the project Be Spectative was able to give you as an artist that might not uh, be a given in a regular production. Yeah, what is given by this spectacle is especially uh, this uh, international context of working, uh, connection with the, with the co-producers, like meeting new people, new cultural centers, new networks through which we can continue working in the future and also the ability to travel, which is a bit restricted at the moment, but we can, we're still in touch with a lot of people. And also this um, financial part is always a bit in a way. So it all also provided us with the, uh, so that we can develop our projects and we're artists and we're not working for free, which is also a, another topic to discuss also. So this is also important, uh, important uh, part, but also to give us opportunity as a freelance artist to give us a space to show our own work and to 
as its uh, idea of this perspective is to um, to yes to travel but to kind of uh, help our uh, visibility of the artist so we can kind of with our production um, make some kind of a tour or this piece will um, not will be alive after the premiere that's the idea of the whole thing well thank you very much for being here today Thank you for... You're very excited to see the premiere in September. And of course, the future touring of the performance. So I wish you good, good, good luck. Thank you. It was really a, a nice talk and sharing our idea and the project with, with you.